hey guys welcome back to my channel um so i have had like you know quite a few people ask me over the last um few months especially on if i could show a video um how to cut you know how i cut my own vinyls and i have said a couple of times that it's something i wouldn't probably be filming just because i felt like there was already lots of videos out there showing how to do it um but i have still had repeated you know requests to show how i do it um and so i thought okay today i would just do a very quick um basic tutorial on how i cut my vinyls um the People at Arteza were very kind enough to send me some of their self-adhesive vinyl to show you guys how to, yeah, how I use my silhouette machine to cut vinyls. So these are 12 by 12 um, sheets and they do come in different colours. So this is the blue and green one. And the reason like I like this brand is that they are very, very strong. So... I ha I have a mug I will show you in a minute that I'm using this morning and unless you're using like kind of you know permanent vinyl when you wash it, it will come off so if you're looking for vinyl just for like craft projects um to use in your planner and things like that obviously you don't need to find permanent vinyl but I do find this like uh this kind of quality is really um easy to work with it's easy to weed out which i'll show you what that means um and it's just really great quality it cuts really well um than a lot of cheaper ones also when you're transferring it to like either paper or you know mugs or um glass jars you know whatever craft project you're applying it to if you don't have a good quality vinyl it's going to be really hard to transfer it um, so you want, you know, good quality for cutting, for weeding and for application. And um, Arteza definitely has some of the best vinyl that I've worked with. Um, it does tell you in the back of their packaging as well how to use it. it tells you which colours you get in the packet. You get 20% voucher for your next um, purchase. And it also has this, um, I forgot what these things are called qr codes or something like that that you scan on your phone if you want some helpful tips okay um so yeah this is the vinyl that i will be working with today and i will show you step by step how to design uh your vinyls how to cut how to weed how to apply the whole thing so let me open this up and show you what's inside Okay, so these are the colours that you get. They are beautiful, beautiful holographic ones. Um, like I said, this is the green and blue. Yeah, blue and green set. Um, there are lots of other choices that you can get from their website. Um, so yeah, this is what I'll be working with. I probably l would choose one of these two. Um, it's not really showing up so much on the camera, but this one's a bit more like gold. This is more like peachy gold. Um, so they're kind of ought to be colours. Um, I think I will probably work with this one today. So I will put these back. And let's go over to my silhouette where I will show you how I, you know, where the first part of um, making vinyls happens. So when you open up Silhouette, um, the software, this is what, you know, it will look like. This is what the page setup looks like. And you'll have like a few tools on the side there, some along the top, and then lots more tools um, on this side. So this page is set up for printing and cutting, so like stickers. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of um, these registration marks and the red line because that is just a guide to show you um, where you know when you print this is what your page is going to print like but because we're not printing we're just using vinyls we don't need these registration marks we don't need the print line any of that um, because when you print stickers obviously you have to be very exact about cutting around the sticker when you're cutting a vinyl 
it doesn't really matter, you know, if it starts there or there, there's no design as such that it's cutting around. So we go to this top one here, the page setup, and you want to click off show print border because we don't need that. And then we go to this one and press registration marks off. So all we need is this little red line here and that's going to show us that we shouldn't um, put our design outside of this red line. The red line is the cut line. Okay, so this is our blank canvas. This is what we'll be working with. So when I normally do my vinyls for like um, my name, for example, or quotes or anything like that, there are two ways to do it. The first one is obviously to just use this text button and write out your name. Um, you can change like down here with the settings button, you can change the measurements, you can use millimeters, centimeters, I always go for inches just because I know the measurements of my Stalogy in inches. Um, and you size it to whatever you want, like if you're making labels for your jars or you know whatever you're kind of making vinyl decals for, you want to just get the measurement of the width but also the height as well. So I know my Stalogy is five by seven and if I'm putting it like um, lengthwise then I can have it, like if I'm having it like this on my page, then I can have it to be uh, seven, up to seven centimeter uh, inches. Let's see, put that back. Um, but I, so I always go for like a little bit less. So let's go for, I, I, not, I do like them quite big. So I would normally go for about six and a half, 6.6, 6, depending on the design. And I kind of center it just because, unless I'm going to put like something else along here, it's kind of a bit of a wasted space anyway. So you center that a little bit and then you can obviously change the font. Uh, let's say you wanna go for this font. Um, so this is Bromello. And you'll see here that if you were to cut this now, you see the way the D kind of cuts into the A and it does that for all the letters. You're going to get all this cut out. Wherever the red line is, that's where it's going to cut and you don't want that. You don't want the letters cutting into each other. So there's a very quick and easy fix that I didn't find till much later on. Um, but you basically click on your name and you press this tool here, which is the welding tool. And you'll see that it's now just seamlessly joined up the letters so they're not going to cut into each other okay so again when you change the font the sizing will change so you want to make sure you've got the sizing correct um, and then what you would do let's say if you were happy with that's about six and a half if you were happy with this you would go to send and we would then just put the vinyl in the machine and you know do the settings of the cut settings and cut it. But I'm going to show you the other way to do it. So obviously you can play around with the fonts for, um, you know, there's so many different fonts and you can download some fonts, you can purchase fonts and do all sorts of um, different lettering styles. So sometimes shops will do hand lettering for you as a digital. So they will, you know, you pay them for a digital, um, cut file or even just a print file and they will letter your name or whatever you want for you. So I've got one here from a shop that I got a long time ago. I don't know which one it was. I'm sorry. Um, so when, when, you, when you get this file it's going to be like this and I don't want obviously the white background. I don't want the black. I just want the outline of my name so that we can cut around here. So you're gonna to go to this tool here, which is the trace tool, and you're gonna select trace area. And you basically try and just select close to your, like, you know, the name as much as possible. We don't want too much white space on it. I mean, it doesn't matter so much. And wherever it's kind of yellow is what 
it's going to trace around but you'll see some some like kind of black spots here it's not so thick it's very very thin and that's going to have like you know you're going to have difficulty cutting that if it's it's if it's very thin so we do want to kind of make that a little bit more bold and to do that we just increase the threshold so if you see like if i went all the way that's way too much so i will just go to 100% and slowly work my way down one by one and see like okay right now it's still there's still lots of um, like yellow speckles so that you know I want a bit more of a cleaner look but I still want my name as bold as possible so I keep going down until I get to somewhere where I'm happy that the lines are a bit more bolder and there's no extra you know splatters anyway so that I'm happy with that um, and then I basically just press trace okay and then this white piece here with your name on it printed on it you can just delete that and now you are left with you know the trace outline of your name so if you wanted to make this into a sticker but you wanted you know different colors you didn't want black you would just click on it and you could fill it up now with you know different colors um, whatever you wanted but we don't want any colors because we want to send this to a vinyl uh, we want to cut this on a vinyl um, so let's do that let's move this across to the page um, again remember we want to size it so that it's sized for my Stalogy so that's going to be about six and a half let's say uh, I could probably go a bit more actually and just making sure it's kind of within you know the red lines there's nothing peeking out at the top um, and yeah I'm happy with that so now that you've got your design you can obviously do multiple ones if you want all the if you're going to use the same sheet of vinyl so if you're going to have like let's say you've got a blue piece of vinyl and you want to cut lots of different things in the same color you just continue adding to this page um, otherwise you would just cut this part and then you cut the vinyl off like the the page i'll show you and then you'll still have this much of the page left for next time. to um cut an image you do it in exactly the same way so this is just a pumpkin that I purchased on the silhouette store so when you go to um, um, you basically just type in whatever you're searching for let's say let's just search for pumpkins and it will come up with all the you know images that they sell so you can just have a look through what you know what kind of pumpkins you're looking for um these ones that are filled in generally they are for die cuts you're not going to get like the color you know when you uh, cut a vinyl you're really looking for like these ones that have lines and clear like white insides so anything like that anything like that they're going to be good ones that one's going to be a good one to cut in a vinyl so you're looking for ones that have you know white space um so yeah this is how i basically get my majority of my um designs or i purchase them on etsy and once you you know buy them they automatically download to your silhouette library where all your designs are kept so I've got this pumpkin and I'm going to show you how if you know I was to cut this into a vinyl how you would do it so it's in exactly the same way as the name you use the trace tool and make it so you can see there there's not hardly anything is yellow we want to increase that threshold remember I always go to like a hundred and work backwards um, I just find that gives me a very thick bold cut so that looks good um, that is on 97 I would trace that and then this can go in the bin and this is what my vinyl will cut now uh, I have had requests to show how I make the bookmarks so whether you're using pumpkins or bows or literally anything at all hearts all you want to do is you want to replicate these so you want to make more of them 
So that's this tool here. You can just use your um, keyboard, but I will show you, you know, how you do it on the tool. So I basically want to duplicate. That's going to give me two more. Let's do a stack of five. So let's say you wanted to make a bookmark with a stack of five pumpkins. You want to kind of not have them in a straight line unless that's, you know, if that's how you like your pumpkins. Um, you will need to kind of overlap them a tiny bit at the bottom because otherwise you will get five separate, um, you know, this is what the bookmark will look like. So you can obviously leave it as it is and then just weed and put it on a piece of acetate and use it. Um, if you wanted them to kind of be like one whole bookmark, then you would overlap them a little bit. You'll see here, I'm just going over it just a little bit there so that the vinyl, when it cuts, it will cut this into one big piece. And you continue doing that, you continue moving them up and overlapping them a little bit each time. And once you have done that, remember we want to weld them together okay so you see here now this has become one big piece so you don't want to um, the red lines is where the blade will cut so you don't want to cut like tiny tiny little pieces off so that's why the welding is really important um, you can also just kind of oops not that use this and kind of you know turn them around a little bit so that you're getting a more kind of natural um, look of stacked pumpkins you know this is what I do this is how I do mine um, and then again we are going to move them all up slightly to kind of stack them up a little bit on top of each other so you'll see let me zoom in I'm going to move this up so that and maybe even to the side so this bit and that bit here will become joined um, if I move that slightly that way, that, and again this last one, okay? So now they're kind of slanted and they're a little bit on top of each other. We're going to weld the whole thing into one and that's going to join you know, it's not going to change the shapes of the pumpkin or anything like that. It just becomes one long uh, bookmark, I guess. Um, and then again, you just size it up. So, you know, if you've got a bigger planner, you're going to want a bigger bookmark. Obviously, the maximum you can go by is the size of the vinyl. Um, but I actually wouldn't even need it. Like, this is huge. This is almost 15 inches so my stalogy is seven so I would do it a little bit bigger than that because obviously I want it peeking out so I would go for about eight and that you know um, maybe even less but that would give me a nice size bookmark for my uh, stalogy and then you cut this in exactly the same way as um, I will show you with the name vinyl. So again, you can do this with any design, with hearts, with bows. Um, if you didn't want, you know, to stack them up like this, you just wanted a single one, then you would just size that and send that. Um, so yeah, let's get back to cutting my name vinyl. So once you've got your size, you've got your name, you've got your design, you basically press send and at this point you would you know um, plug in your machine it comes as like a USB port you plug that in there to your laptop or computer and then you also plug it into your mains these are the settings that you'll get you want to first of all do vinyl because that's what we are doing and we're using glossy vinyl so that's what we'll select and we want to be cutting okay so when you select cut it takes you to the ratchet blade and when you select your name you want to make sure you're setting it to cut if you do cut edge only it's only going to cut um, it's going to cut 
you know, basically not what we want. <laughs> um, we want to cut, which tells it everywhere where there's a red line, that is where we want to cut. Um, you do have to sometimes play around with the force and the speed. I like to have mine a little bit slower. I just find that it gives me a little bit more of a clean cut. Um, and you can obviously change the depth of the blade as well. So that you have to do that manually on the machine. I'll show you in a minute. I find that one for vinyl. I don't know why that's the automatic like uh, setting because I find that one is never really enough. I need the blade to be a little bit deeper. Generally, like I would say three or four. But you don't have to change it on here. You just do it manually on your machine. It's not a problem. And then the force as well, you know, different vinyls. If you're buying vinyl that's slightly thinner, you will use less force. If you're using really good quality, thicker vinyl, then you're going to need more force. So that's, you know, basically what you do on the machine. And then once you have plugged the machine in, I always do a test cut. And what that does is it cuts a little triangle and a square on the corner. And it shows you how the vinyl is going to cut. So when you do your test cut, you'll see, actually, you know, it's not really cutting deep enough. I'm not able to peel it off easily. So then we increase the force. Or you might realize it's cut all the way through the backing pa paper as well. And in which case we need to reduce the force or reduce the blade. Um, so yeah, you make sure you've got your test settings um, sorted first. And then once you're happy that it's cut how you would like, you basically just press send and it will cut the vinyl for you. So let me switch over to my machine and show you guys what I mean. Okay, so I have my silhouette here plugged in. So this one goes to the like main socket and then this one is connected to my MacBook. Um, so this is the vinyl I was talking about. So I do have like a vinyl on my mug. And if like, if I've had this on there for like, I'd say over a year now, obviously when I wash it, it if it, if this wasn't like good quality permanent vinyl, it would definitely start peeling off. Even with permanent vinyl, you're not going to be able to put it in the dishwasher or microwave. Um, but you'll see that, you know, you can hand wash it and it's going to be very, very durable. Um, so, yeah, that is you definitely want to buy good quality vinyl. So I've got my machine set up. I've got my laptop here connected. Um, just going to switch that on. I have actually cut down my um, vinyl um, because the machine that I have doesn't allow for 12 by 12 sheets. Um, this is the portrait. Um, but on the back of this vinyl, it you know, it does come with a grid, which makes it so easy <laughs> to like, you know, cut it down smaller. And then even when you're cutting out like my name, you'll see like once I cut it out, it's so handy to be able to cut straight um and not you know like kind of have wobbly edges and stuff so i definitely that's like a huge plus for me so just line it up with the white rollers here and i don't when i'm cutting vinyl i don't ever use a cutting mat i only use a cutting mat if i'm using um if i'm going to cut die cuts where they're going to cut through this page as well but the goal here is just to cut through the vinyl not through the backing so I don't need to use the mat and I'm just going to feed that in. I will do a test cut. So like I said, on my laptop, I'm just pressing the test button and that will cut like a little bit on the corner. And we can just test and see whether they are the right settings. So you see this kind of like peeled up very easily. You know no problem at all so that seems to be the correct settings uh, so I do have it on blade number three force 12 speed three as well back in it goes Okay, so here is what the cut 
vinyl looks like. And now comes the fun part. Well, it's all fun really, is cutting it. So remember how I said that on the back, there are these grid lines that helps it make, helps make it cut um, easier. So I can see that I need to cut about here and that's going to give me easy way okay and so you have your vinyl I like to cut off the excess as well on the edges just because when you're weeding it just makes it a lot easier the less like huge pieces of vinyl that you have on there um don't I would say don't throw these bits away because next time you're cutting vinyl, you can actually use these for the test cut that I showed you guys. Um, so yeah, you just put this in the machine and it will cut it out. And then that way you don't have to keep using like the corner of the um, design in case you have something there. So now is the weeding part. Now you can buy like specific weeding tools. I, let me zoom in. I prefer to just use like a tweezer or my fingers. So the first thing you can do is either take out the edge or you can take out all the little bits in between. So I generally work like this. I will just start taking out all the inside bits um, and then I will peel off the middle, The sorry, the outside bit. Um, and this is just kind of how I do it. I'm sure there are you know, professional weeders who would say you should keep it flat and peel or whatever. Um, but these pieces here are big enough that, you know, you don't need a tweezer. I kind of only need a tweezer for like the tiny bits there. Um, and I would just continue doing that. You'll know which parts to take out. Um, you'll just be able to see, <laughs> um, you know, the outlines of the letters. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just finish doing, so this is part of the big piece. I'm going to have scissors handy. Um, I'm going to just finish weeding this and then I will be back to show you guys how I take off the very big uh, outside piece because I do like to do it in sections. In fact, I think that might be it. I do like to do it in sections because if I try to take off the whole outside piece in one go, I have found that it ends up sometimes um, sticking to itself, which kind of ruins the whole uh, design. Okay, so I will just peel off one edge of the vinyl and go up to the design. So you can see there we've come off and I will just cut a slit there and then work in sections. So I will do the whole of the top section and this vinyl like I said is so easy to work with it's really really good quality um, with some cheaper vinyls it will you know be a lot more hard work to weed and it will stick to the um, you know like you'll have difficulty cutting it not cutting it pulling it apart this you can see just so seamless and so easy to work with okay so that is all just unfortunately rubbish and then there is this section here that is going to come off and that is it you want to make sure when you're pulling this off that the eye if you've got eyes you know they stay on um again the cheap quality vinyls will probably pull this eye off with the scraps this hasn't it is just beautiful beautiful um and now is the next part of sticking it on okay so i've got this piece of um transferring paper and all that is is it's got backing on the tape and then it's clear kind of tape sticky tape on the top and it comes in like big sheets or big rolls and you would just measure your vinyl against the sheet and cut out how much you need again it comes with you know grid on the back which makes it very easy for you to cut out correctly um so what this transference tape does it basically helps you lift the vinyl off this and onto whatever surface you want to stick it onto 
so uh you just peel it and when i'm working with like a slightly bigger design i don't just peel the whole thing off and stick it because that sometimes has ended up like yeah all like this ends up like creased and smushed and not not very smooth so i just do one corner and i will just put it down so making sure i'm like corner to corner and then very slowly peel and stick like that okay so now you have you know your design and this if you were to purchase vinyls from shops this is how they would sell them to you they you know they come like ready and all you would have to do is lift this off and stick it onto whatever you want to so i've got this like sort of holographic um acetate i guess now you'll see that if you try to just lift this off it's not always going to just lift the design the vinyl off with it so what you need to do is you need a gift card or ruler or something like that and you just want to take two let me peel that off the back of the um okay i'll get that later you just want to kind of smooth it out and really stick it on like that okay and then i find it easier actually if you peel the backing off versus if you try and pull this if you pull this you don't always get you know um whereas if you keep if you peel from the back here and keep this page as flat as possible and if you need to use a ruler to kind of help you pull it off you can and that's just going to transfer the vinyl onto that transfer tape now you don't want to do this until you're ready to use your vinyl otherwise you would just leave it on this and you can stick it back on there if you change your mind um, leave it on here until you're ready to use it so i've got this like measured out already for my b6 allergy and you can use like paper cutter to help you get it you know straight if you're worried about laying it down wonky so you just kind of line this up here and then that way you kind of know how you know like you're not putting it down like that or like that um yeah i normally like to have my vinyls this way but you can obviously do them however you like if you wanted them across the uh bottom you would obviously size them differently so let's see that's kind of center sorry i'm just making sure my head is not in the way so you guys can actually see and yeah i am happy with that again you're going to use your card to just kind of smush that down you can see that i've gone a little bit to the edge there not so much there i could have like lined it up better but that's okay so now you want a, the vinyl to really adhere to this piece of acetate and you want it to come off the transfer tape and now you peel the tape off so you can with with some vinyls it's not going to come off so easily and you might have to like um depending on depending on the surface like when i used it on my mac it the backing did not just peel off easily so i had to use this method again of like pushing it down with my card and dragging the tape off but um because this is just like acetate as long as you keep the sticky part flat it's going to just come off beautifully remember you want to make sure the dot is on um, and if you have kind of swiped this down enough you will get you know it will just come off easily like that without dragging the acetate up um you can actually reuse this backing tape i use mine a couple of like times before it's you know before throwing it away because um yeah it, it hasn't lost its stickiness really so that is it that is um ready to be tipped in let me grab my stalogy this is ready to go into my stalogy wherever i want um i haven't decided where i'm going to put it yet so i'm not going to tip it in 
but otherwise I do have a video on how you can tip things in uh, I will link that below and you could have this like beautiful beautiful you know custom made uh dashboard using vinyl you can even use like you can do different quotes with vinyls um you can do different colors you know so it's definitely like such a fantastic way of personalizing and customizing your planners but even like so many other different craft projects that you can do you just have to like <laughs> look on youtube for like things you can make with um vinyls i literally stick them absolutely everywhere like you'll see i've got it on my macbook all my kitchen jars have like vinyls on them um i am actually looking for like clear acrylic containers for my bathroom storage stuff so i can label all of that stuff in vinyl um yeah so so beautiful and looks so professional you can use whatever font you like or you can have somebody letter your name or whatever for you um yeah so let me know what you guys think if you try this out um if you have any questions drop them in the comments section below um i do actually have a code that you can use for arteza they're very kindly offered um you guys a discount if you would like to purchase um from them i think it's for anything in their store not just vinyls i will leave that below as well um and yeah, I hope that was helpful and fun to see how I do this. And thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye.